my brothers and sisters, we ask in this Jum'ah of ours that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings glad news to us and happiness to us by granting victory to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their affairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those that have passed grant them the highest levels of Jannah. And those that are alive, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and safeguard them. The past two months in our khutbas, in our gatherings, every time that we would greet one another, every time that we would see one another, all we could be thinking about is what is happening in Gaza. What is happening to the believers that are there and the things that we constantly hear and the things that we constantly see. And our minds have been occupied with what we see. And our hearts are, are filled with sadness with what we are seeing. And it is a time for us to really reflect on why these things are happening or why are we feeling the way that we are feeling when we see what is happening. We know that from the blessings of Islam that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam something that was unique about him when you compare him to the messengers that were sent before him was that he was sent to mankind, all of them, not just to a group of people. When we look at the prophets that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sent before, they would be sent to their people to try and guide their people. Whoever from amongst their people believed in them, they would be saved. Whoever from amongst their people rejected them, they would be destroyed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we are told, that he was sent to all of mankind. And in this, there was a change in the way that the message itself would be delivered to the people. Now the people no longer are going to be referred to as this set of people that received this messenger, or this set of people that received this messenger. You look throughout the Quran and you find, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that when he sent to Ad, their brother, or when he sent to Thamud, their brother, or when he sent to the people of Madian, their brother, and so on. And you hear this reference of these messengers being from amongst the people that they were sent to. But when you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you see how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala talks to him, it is not as he was sent to a group of people. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ that Allah has favored the believers. إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا That when He sent a messenger to them. And a believer, it is not just a person that was alive during the time of the Prophet Wasallam, but someone that even after comes and believes in the Prophet Wasallam. this was the messenger that was sent to you. And the Prophet Wasallam clarified this to the companions when one day before his passing, he goes to visit the shuhada of Uhud and he's there and he says, I miss my brothers. I wish I could see my brothers. And the companions, they said, Awalasna ikhwanak, are we not your brothers? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La, antum ashabi, that no, you guys are my companions. As for my brothers, he says, Innahum qawmun yu'minuna bi wa lam yarawni, that they are a people that believed in me and they have not seen me. Meaning even us when we come after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Iman that we have makes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam our Messenger. And it is with this foundation that the feelings that we feel for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, it might be that there's nobody that is sitting in this khutbah today that has family in Gaza or they themselves are not from Gaza. But because of this Iman that we share, they are there, we are here, thousands of miles, what is happening to them, it is harming us. What we see brings sadness to us. And really to the believers, this is not just for the people of Gaza. It is for anybody all over the world. You can go as far as China if you want. The state of the, that the believers find themselves in, we are concerned with it. You know, these past two months, we've been seeing the double standards that have been applied by the kuffar on who they value and who they do not value. And we get angry at the fact that, you know what? To them, it seems like an Israeli life or life is worth more than thousands and thousands of our brothers and sisters' lives. Now I want us to think for a moment, is our Iman also conditioned to be like that? Is the way that we look at believers all the same? Or is it, if the believer is from where I am from, my attachment to him is greater. 
or if he looks like me, my attachment to him is greater. And you might be thinking, what am I talking about? You know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the things that he had to eradicate when he first came to Medina was the understanding that the people of Medina and the people that were coming from Mecca are two different people. That the Ansar would be by themselves and the Muhajireen would be by themselves, but at the same time claiming that we are brothers and sisters in La ilaha illallah. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He comes into Medina as Anas ibn Malik says, the first thing that he did as soon as he enters Medina, he, get, he holds a meeting in the house of Anas. And he brings the 40 people that made Hijrah. And he brings 40 from the Ansar. He places them inside of the room and he tells them, now you two are going to be brothers to one another. And he would pick one from the Ansar and one from the Muhajireen. You will, be, you will treat one another as you would if this person was your actual brother. To the point where even the inheritance, before it would go to anybody else, it would have to go to this brother. And this was the first thing that he did. So that the Muhajireen and the Ansar don't continue to have the disease that they used to have in Mecca. That we are the people of Quraysh. There are certain things that I have. There are certain virtues that I have. Now when we go to Medina and we see al Ausan as Khazraj, we see them as we used to see them before. That we are not the same. But because you have this message that came to you of La ilaha illallah, none of these things matter. It doesn't matter that the people today that are suffering in Gaza are not my people. It does not matter that they're not your people. What matters is, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he says, لَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا مِّنَ النَّاسِ خَلِيلًا That if I was to take a person, if I was to take a person from the people as a close friend, لَاتَّخَذْتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ خَلِيلًا I would have taken Abu Bakr as that close friend. I would have made him my Khalil. وَلَكِنْ خُلَّةُ الْإِسْلَامِ أَفْضَلُ But the bond that Islam has created between me and him, and that also means the bond that Islam has created between you and I, it is far greater than that. Far greater than that for you to take someone as a close friend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes the believers and He says to them, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى that indeed the, 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 the believers to one another, they are brothers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, المؤمن للمؤمن كالبنيان, That the believer to another believer, they are like bricks next to one another. يَشُذُّ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا That they strengthen one another. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu narrates this hadith. He says after that, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَشَبَّكَ بَيْنَ أَصَابِعِهِ That he took his fingers and he went like this. To show this bond of Iman. That the bond that the believer has to the other believer. Now what I want us to think about is when we see what is happening and we see that there are Muslims that are surrounding the brothers and sisters of ours in Gaza that are on all sides Muslims. Whether you look to the south, south and you find our Egyptian brothers and sisters. You look to the east or to the west and you find our Jordanian brothers. You look up north, you have our Syrian brothers. And just the entire area being in a place where it's majority Muslims. And we begin to even ask ourselves when we talk about this, how come they're not doing anything for them? How come they're, they're not moving, they're not mobilizing to do anything? And then we'll go on when we say, you know, maybe it's because the leaders are like this and this and this. They're preventing them from this and this and this. Now I want you to think of that and then bring yourself here. How many times, how many times has the statement escaped our tongues where we talk about a believer that is not from our people as being different than us? How many of us have told our daughters and our sons that you have to make sure you stay away from this race, you stay away from this race, you stay away from this race? And I know we might be thinking, so what, I want my, my daughter, I want my son to find someone that is compatible. And your, to you, your compatibility is not that of Iman, but that of this is the race that we want. How many of us, we go to the masjid, you hear today in Jum'ah, we're about to stand together and pray Salah. You know, one of the benefits that you see when you come to Salah is you're not sitting like, this is my people, I'm going to sit next to them. You come, you find the row, you sit down. But as soon as Salah is finished and you say, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum, you get up, or we get up, 
And we begin to form our circles. That the people that I know, I'm going to go and talk to them. And on this side, I'm going to go this one circle here, one circle here. Look at our masajids. And then have somebody that is not from that group that is gathered together, come into that group. What is going to happen? Are we all going to welcome him and say, this is a brother that we just prayed salah with? This is somebody that with, we just worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with? Somebody that we followed the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he says, وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانَا and be the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together as brothers? Or are we going to say, why is this person here? And all of our gazes are turning to him as if he's lost. Right? Or is this how we are? Look at the messages that we go to and how these circles just form. And you and I, whether we want to admit it or not, we know whether we should go here or not. Where I should go to this circle or I should not go. And then afterwards we'll stand and we say, what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza? Why are the Muslims not going and, and, and helping them? Why are they not doing anything? You and I today, if we truly claim to care and have some type of feeling for them in our hearts, do we actually have that feeling for all of the believers? Do we have it for the believers that are sitting next to you? You know the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is known as the hadith of Jibreel Alayhi Salam where he comes and he asks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell me about Islam. Tell me about Iman, tell me about Ihsan. If you look at the way that Umar ibn al-Khattab, who's the one narrating this hadith, describes Jibril alayhi salam, there are some things that we have to really pay close attention to. He says that one day we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. While we were sitting with him, a man came. We saw that his hair was extremely black. We saw that his clothing was extremely white. لا يرى عليه أثر السفر that when we looked at him, we did not see the signs of travel because he wouldn't have time to clean his hair. Nor would his clothes be the way, the, the, how wide it would be if he came from travel. The next thing that he says, he says that there was not a single one of us that knew who this man was. Not a single one of us who knew this per who this man was. What does this actually tell you? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, they knew about one another. To the point where he could make this claim that this is a man that none of us know. Now, I, look at us here in this gathering. If I were to ask you, the person that is to your left, the person that is to your right, do you know anything about them? Do you know any, like, do, do you know his name? The one that you pray with at the masjid, over and over, do you know his name? Do you know her name? How many of us can sit here and say, that if one of us were to go sick or to become sick, may Allah protect us, that we are going to be, there's going to be this concern of what happened to our brother. We have to go and check on him. Or is it going to be, oh, somebody used to come. Somebody used to be here. And then with this same tongue, with this same idea, we'll come and we say, our brothers are brothers. Our brothers are brothers. Does that make sense? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he instilled into the companions was that the believers, it does not matter who they are. Because of La ilaha illallah, a bond has been made between them. And since this bond has been made, sacrifices are going to be made for it. Because of La ilaha illallah, the rights that you have are going to be given to you. Because of La ilaha illallah, the rights that you have, you're going to give to me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it a condition for the completion of our Iman, for our Iman to be complete, that we love what we love for ourselves, for our brothers. How can I love something for you if I don't even know you and you're sitting this close next to me? We're going to finish our Salah today and maybe none of us will talk to anybody that we don't know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us, لا تدخلون الجنة حتى تؤمنوا that you're not going to enter Jannah you will not enter Jannah until you believe. وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَبُّوا And you're not going to love to, to really have full Iman until you love one another. أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَبَبْتُمْ Should I tell you something that if you do, love is going to increase between you? They said to the Prophet Wasallam, Tell us, what can we do? He said, أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Give salams to one another. Spread salams to one another. Do we think that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam need to be told that they should be giving salams to one another? That I have when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the first time that he came into Medina, the first message that he gives them, says, Ya Ayyuhannas, Afshu Salam, 
وأطعم الطعام وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تدخل جنة ربكم بسلام He says to them, oh people, spread the salams. Give salams to one another. Feed those that need to be fed. Feed those that need to be fed. Pray during the night while the people are sleeping and you'll enter the Jannah of your Lord in peace. Now you and I, maybe, maybe we're able to fulfill the last one to where we pray during the night. But do we really, if we were to look here, would we say that this is a person that I can do, the one that needs to be fed? Or this is a person that needs to be given the salams? Or has my salams become like what the Prophet sallallahu said, that towards the end of time, the people will only give salams to the people that they know. And they will not give it to others. I understand that we live in America, so it, it's, it might be difficult for you to tell apart when you're at the store from the believers and the non-believers. But in our masajids, where we pray together, where we are, Ramadan comes, we're having iftar together. Where we pray Jum'ah together. Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Asha together. And what's, who do we give our salams to? When was the last time that you gave salams to a brother that you didn't know? To a sister that you didn't know? Or was it, you know what? I'm forced to give you salams in salah when you're next to me. Salamu alaykum, I have to say it to my right and to my left. But that's all you're getting from me. You're not getting anything else from me. This is not how believers are. That really for me to care about what is happening to the point where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said about the believers, that if one part of the body aches, the rest of it is going to complain. It is going to have fevers. It is going to have its sleepless nights. For me to feel that way about my brothers and sisters in Gaza, Wallahi, it is impossible if I don't feel like that for the people here. For the brothers and sisters that I have here, I know nothing about them. I don't know their names. I don't know the conditions that they find themselves in. Then you want me to believe you when you tell me, my brothers and sisters in Gaza, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for shortcomings. My brothers and sisters, I know that what we are seeing really hurts. And it is very, very painful. We try whatever we can to make sure that we can help our brothers and sisters through these times of difficulty. And at the same time realizing that as a believer, the same feeling that I have, the same sadness, the same effort that I put in to make sure that my brothers and sisters in Gaza are going to be feed, I will put that in for the believer no matter if he is here with me, no matter if he's in China, no matter, no matter if he's in Ethiopia, no matter if he is in Sudan, no matter if he's in Yemen, if he's in Syria, if he's in India, if he's in Bangladesh, to me it does not matter. That we are a people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, al -mu'minun, that the believers and the believing women, that they are guardians of one another. And this guardianship does not end because I don't see you on the news. We have what is reported to be said by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whoever wakes up in the morning and he does not concern himself with the affairs of the believers, he's not from amongst them. The believers are not just a people in one location, but they are anyone on the face of the earth that says La ilaha illallah. The care that we have, that the believers have for one another, it does not even end when we are standing in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We know the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu where he says on the day of judgment, the people are going to be brought to, to the Sirat. And the Sirat, this is the only, the believers are the only ones passing through. There will be no Kafir, there will be no Munafiq, only the people of Iman. And when they're crossing it on the other side, Jannah is waiting for them. So when the believers that make it across, make it across, they're not going to say, I am saved. The people with me are saved. I'm going to go into Jannah. They're going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that we used to have brothers that used to fast with us, that used to pray with us, that have fallen into the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, go and get them out for anyone that has a gold coin of Iman in their heart. And this happens three times, right? Just for us to understand, even at that moment where I can see Jannah in front of me, I can actually see it. I have passed my test. May Allah make us from those that pass it. We have passed it and we're still going to be worried about our brothers.
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the people of Jannah that they're, they're going to come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on the day of judgment Allah is going to shade them for the love that they had for one another. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there's going to be a group of people on the day of judgment that the, a, the, the, the messengers are going to be jealous of. And they were asked who are these people going to be? He said the people that used to love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is going to make pillars for them where they'll sit on kursis of them made of nur. We want that to happen. My love for the believer, just like it normally needs to be, is it's going to begin with the people that are next to me. And then it goes on from there to the ummah and it expands and it expands. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that no one has believed in me who goes to sleep with his stomach full while his neighbor is hungry. All right, we know this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now really think about us. Do we know the condition that the believers find themselves in? That are living next to us? Do we know the people that are sitting next to us? Are we going to give them salams after the salah? Are we actually going to see, you know what? I have to invest my time in who you are. Because I have to love you. And I have to want the best for you. For me to enter Jannah. And if that's not there, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on us and forgive us for our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant victory to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our du'as for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the conditions into a better condition for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory and patience and steadfastness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory and patience and steadfastness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them for their shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower them with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower them with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us, on those whom we love and those that love us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us under his shade on the day of judgment, the day that there's no shade except his shade. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those that love one another for his sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, make us from those that know the feeling of la ilaha illallah and the bond that has been created between every single one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina ala wa nar. Ibad Allah sallu wa sallimu ala man awakum Allah wa salati wa taslimu alayhi. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zidu anhim wa barika ala abdika wa khaylika Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أقيم السلام